Hi, I'm Nick from Fouchmatic Off Grid. This week we did some brush clearing to clear a spot for the new workshop and we're harvesting some lumber for the next phase of the house, which is a mud room right off of the front door. Uh, so here we go. This should be it. I'm scared. Are you scared? Now we gotta move it. Here we go again. Yeah, I'll get it limbed and cut into pieces. But I think we need to. I mean, we might be able to drag it, drag pieces up onto the road and then into our log heap, you know? Mm -hmm. everybody, welcome back to the Mountain Dream Home. In this update, we're talking about bringing down trees and moving logs, which is always an adventure. In fact, the first time that Nick brought down trees, I intentionally kept myself and the children at a, a, quite a distance. In fact, we were all the way in town. So it was interesting for us to get to see it this time. Our kids are a little bit bigger and also Nick's confidence has increased about being sure that he can drop the tree right where he wants it. So we were able to get to see it and the kids were able to get to see it. It is an adventure, but it's also pretty humbling to realize that a stick of wood comes from that. We had spotted a couple of uh, trees that were not doing so well. They had big clumpy puff balls, which uh, tell us that the tree has uh, mistletoe. It deforms the way that branches grow and it eventually kills the tree. We selected trees that both were diseased and conveniently located. Uh, they were, we were able to get them to fall uh, right next to or across the road where I could use the truck to deal with it, where I could kind of roll them around in, uh, in an open area and I didn't have to wait for heavy equipment to be able to um, get things moved. I'd say that taking down a tree is actually in the same family as dealing with meat animals and the sense of responsibility and relationship and humility that you have. I'd so much rather be living a life where I'm aware of that than just floating along, not knowing about the trees being cut down on my behalf or the animals being killed on my behalf and thinking everything's just fine and hunky-dory. It's a privilege to be able to witness and understand how we are nurtured and supported by the trees, by other animals, and then to, to recreate a sense of responsibility, to return to the, to the ecosystem and say, hey, I live here, I need to clean up my own messes, I need to contribute, I need to take some responsibility for uh, the effect that I'm having on this space. Moving logs by uh, yourself or just without heavy equipment um, is a lot of work. Um, with a couple of key tools and, um, and just a basic understanding of physics and how things move, uh, it is doable. Um, I did really benefit from planning where they fall. And um, right in our log stack. So that uh, they didn't have far to go. They didn't have uh, rough terrain to, to go over and they never had to move uphill. I have all of, the, all of my logs uh, stacked up here 
Um, and uh, I just wanted them to not roll further down the hill. So I left that sapling in and that is holding most of the, the stack back. Um, as I go to use some of these, uh, I'll, I'll cut that off and just have a little bit of a, of a nub of that sapling to roll over and then get onto the mill from there. Um, it's still a lot of work, but I'm still happy that I'm doing it by hand and um, that I'm doing it this way. Before we brought down those trees, we did two days of brush clearing. Here on this hillside, above the yurt and across from the house, which we've lived here four years and we have never seen this hillside. It's like having a brand new view. We're going out to run the chipper today. We have big piles of brush and branches. We like wood chips and we have a wood chipper. So we're gonna put those things together and uh, get a little work done. You may have seen this process before. We've done a video on uh, brush clearing and this uh, chipper shredder that I'm using. Um, we clear a little bit every year. So we're just trying to chew away at the overgrown brush. It um, limits the fire damage because all of this undergrowth really is a, the fuel that pushes a, a fire um, through your areas. In this case, we're clearing for a building too. So this is right where my workshop is gonna be. Right. Starts with uh, me just walking through with the brush cutter. Do some cutting, clean that out of the way, do some more cutting, uh, clean that out of the way, pick up all the dead stuff off of the ground. We don't even rake it when we're done. Um, we just leave a little bit of cover on the ground so we don't scratch it to bare dirt. So we put that all into piles and then we park the chipper right next to a pile and we run through anything that'll fit through the chipper. If it's too bent or too big, then we set it aside and I'll come through later with the chop saw and generator and cut those into firewood sizes. One thing that we have that we figured out this year since we didn't want the chips right where we were chipping up, we, um, we set up a tarp uh, so that we could carry away all the chips. And one thing about blowing chips into a tarp is that they come out of there at a great rate of speed and they're very sharp. So it's almost like sandblasting. So we would put down a piece of plywood right where the chips came out so we didn't eat a hole in the tarp. Um, and that seemed to, uh, that seemed to make our tarp last a lot longer. So this is the right time of year for us to be doing this work. Right before the growth really takes off, before everything has leaves set in, uh, you can easily see where you're going and you're mostly cutting dead stuff, which is easier than cutting and chipping the green stuff. I don't mind the chipper. I don't mind the time that it takes uh, or the gas that it takes. Uh, and we like the byproduct. So moving forward on the house with the additions that we're planning, um, it makes sense to me to keep harvesting our own lumber uh, from right here, right next to where the house is. Um, the sawmill is a great tool to be able to add value to the resources that we have that are all around us. Um, and as long as we use it uh, wisely, uh, I feel good about uh, harvesting now and then. Uh, I'm just looking forward to making some material you can't buy. I'm 
Nick from Fouchmatic Off Grid. Thanks for watching. Good night, little house. Are you gonna do more? No, you do no more. more. I don't need to do more. It's just awesome. Pretty, uh,